It's been more than a year since the death of Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins, and thousands of fans are still feeling the impact of his untimely passing. Perhaps after Dave Grohl, Taylor Hawkins is the most integral component in the musical genius of the Foo Fighters, possessing an unmatched energy and swagger behind the drum kit that helped define many of the band's most popular songs. But Taylor wasn't just another famous rock drummer from a legendary band, he was also a good showman, a great friend, and a rock and roll fan at heart, which garnered him the respect and admiration of many renowned artists in the industry. And although Taylor's left this world, his fans and peers can always look back on his greatest moments as a reminder of how special was. Keep watching as we look at some of Taylor Hawkins' best moments and a few unforgettable tributes to the late drummer after his passing. You ought to know on Letterman. Before Taylor Hawkins got invited by Dave Grohl to become the Foo Fighters' new drummer, he was the touring drummer for Alanis Morissette in the mid-90s. This was Taylor's first experience being a high-profile musician performing before thousands of fans regularly. Alanis' 1995 album, Jagged Little Pill, was a massive success and established her as an alternative rock superstar. Although Taylor wasn't part of the album's recording process, he subsequently appeared in its music videos, including its lead single, You Oughta Know. This was the same song that Alanis performed on an episode of Letterman in 95, which also happened to be the first time Taylor was seen behind a drum kit on national TV. Although it was his TV debut, the then 20-something-year-old Taylor didn't hold back on the infectious energy he brought to the performance. Alanis may be the star, but for those who were paying enough attention, it was clear that her drummer would also embark on a legendary career one day. Everlong on Letterman Eventually, Taylor and the rest of the Foo Fighters developed a bond with David Letterman that saw them perform on two special occasions on The Late Show. For his comeback show in 2000 after undergoing open-heart surgery, the legendary host asked the Foo Fighters to be his musical guest. Not only did they oblige, but they even canceled a tour so they could fly back to New York to accommodate Letterman's request. Years later, when The Late Show was set to end after two decades, Letterman once again turned to the Foo Fighters and asked them to be his final musical guests. The band was more than happy to accept. One of the highlights of their set that night was their performance of Everlong, which acted as a fitting curtain call for the show. As usual, Taylor was instrumental in elevating the performance to another level, with his passionate playing and stage presence making it one of the Foo Fighters' most memorable moments in their career. DGs. Taylor and the rest of the Foo Fighters weren't afraid to have a bit more fun than other rock bands would allow themselves to, and it showed when they released an album of Bee Gees cover titled Hail Satin. Dubbing themselves as DGs on the record, they surprised fans with their satisfying covers of songs such as More Than a Woman and Night Fever, with the latter featuring Taylor's musical versatility as he trades his drumming power for a simpler yet groovier swing. The world could have seen more of this side of Taylor had he lived longer, but at least fans got this wacky yet wildly entertaining treat from the band shortly before the drummer passed on. Cold Day in the Sun in case anybody was wondering, Taylor Hawkins isn't just a great drummer, he's got some pipes too. He made his vocal debut for the Foo Fighters on their 2005 double album In Your Honor on the track Cold Day in the Sun. Taylor wrote the song himself in 2001, and when the band got together to record In Your Honor, they considered making an electric guitar version. Eventually, they decided to record it with acoustic guitars, which they put on the second all-acoustic disc of the album. It ended up being one of the standout tracks on an album full of great songs, proving that Taylor can do much more than bang away at the drums. The Foo Fighters tribute to Rush. Taylor's been vocal about his admiration for Rush, especially their drummer, Neil Peart. The Foo Fighters inducted the Canadian prog legends into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013, and Taylor paid tributes to one of his drumming idols like only he can. While introducing the band, Taylor said about Peart, the guy spawned a generation of air drummers for decades to come, expressing just how much of a fan he is of the band. Later, Taylor was part of a fun tribute performance, complete with flowing garments and wigs that were commonplace among rock bands in the 70s. The trio of Taylor, Dave Grohl, and Nick Raskulinex launched into a short cover of the instrumental part of Rush's iconic song, 2112. Later, Rush members joined them on stage before the trio gave way to the prog legends as they performed Tom Sawyer. Covering Stay With Me Taylor's created countless fun moments throughout his career by covering rock classics with some of the Foo Fighters' friends. One of those classics is the Faces' Stay With Me, and one of the more notable instances of the band covering the song is at the 2015 edition of Rock Am Ring. The band brought out Dave Ketching of Eagles of Death Metal to join them on stage for the cover, and boy did they nail it out of the park. Oh, yeah. 
Taylor was in top form during the performance as he took on both drumming and singing duties for the cover. It was an all-out fun moment for the crowd that night, and more so for Taylor and the Foo Fighters. Performing with Led Zeppelin In 2008, Taylor Hawkins and Dave Grohl lived out one of their biggest fantasies when they got to play with Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. Dave got the two Zeppelin members to agree to a quick reunion at Wembley Stadium, and they agreed. This allowed both Taylor and Dave to rock it out with two of their heroes, performing two of the band's songs, Rock and Roll, and Ramble On. For their first one, Taylor mustered his inner Robert Plant while Dave sat behind the kit for a heck of a performance. And yes, Taylor hit those high notes, which surely put a smile on Plant's face wherever he watched. For Ramble On, Dave and Taylor switched places. It was a moment that the best friends would never forget, and neither did Jones and Paige. In the wake of Taylor's death, Paige recalled on Instagram, We put in some serious versions of these two songs. It was so good to play with him. I really admired him, and he was a brilliant musician. His technique, his energy, and spirited enthusiasm. Taylor performed Somebody to Love, his final performance. Taylor's final performance was on March 20th, 2022 at Lollapalooza, Argentina. As usual, the Foo Fighters covered a few songs from other artists for fun. One of those was Queen's Somebody to Love, which featured Taylor handling vocal duties. The band's covered the song numerous times in the past, but this one hits differently, considering it was Taylor's last ever performance and the last song he ever sang on stage. Not only did his vocals hold up to Freddie Mercury's, but it was also full of power and emotion, proving just how talented Taylor was. Dave Grohl's heartbreaking performance at Tribute Concert. Six months after Taylor's death, the Foo Fighters held two tribute concerts to honor their departed friend. The first one was in the UK at Wembley Stadium and featured dozens of guests, including Brian Johnson of ACDC, Queen's Roger Taylor and Brian May, Rush's Geddy Lee, Metallica's Lars Ulrich, and many more. While the concert was full of highlights and moments, it would probably be remembered best for two. The first one was the Foo Fighters' performance of Times Like These, which could probably be the most challenging performance of Dave Grohl's life. As Dave took the mic to sing the song on his own for the first few minutes, it's evident that he was getting very emotional and can be seen choking up and pausing several times. Thankfully, the fans were there to power him through and sang along with him until the rest of the band entered. Definitely one of the most emotionally powerful performances by the Foo Fighters, or any band in rock for that matter. The Foo Fighters perform My Hero with Shane Hawkins. Taylor couldn't have had a better tribute than this. Perhaps the most unforgettable moment of the night belonged to his son, Shane Hawkins, who sat behind his father's drum kit to join the Foo Fighters for a performance of My Hero. Shane definitely got his chops from his dad, but there was a lot of emotion behind his playing as he and his dad's closest friends paid tribute to one of the greatest to sit behind the kit. An unforgettable performance for the ages to close off a truly unforgettable night. The Foo Fighters' first album since Taylor's passing, But Here We Are, is scheduled for release later this year. They've even given fans a taste of things to come with the album's first single, Rescued. It remains to be seen who their new drummer will be, but whoever it is has some big shoes to fill, as Taylor Hawkins isn't just a fantastic talent, but a kind soul and a fun guy. One who's a bona fide rock star on the outside, but a passionate rock fan deep inside.